Good morning, Embassy family. It's good to have you uh, with us this morning, worshiping the Lord on this last Sunday in June. And uh, we're looking forward to a good time of studying God's Word this morning and worshiping Him with our singing. So uh, once again, we have uh, Alex, and we have Tara, and we have Pat. Pat. I wanted Pat to say her own name. I don't know why, I just did. (laughs) So we're going to um, sing some songs. Awesome God, a mighty fortress is our God. And um, God of Wonders, all songs that talk about the character of God. So join in singing with us these great songs to praise the Lord. Alex? Street. 
truth abideth still, His kingdom is forever. God of wonders. creation of the water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are Amen. Thanks uh, for singing along with us and lifting your hearts and your voices to the Lord in praise. Thank you, Alex and uh, worship team for leading us in those songs. Isn't it great to sing together the praises of God? I, I love the words to the hymns and, and uh, spiritual songs that we sing. Our God is an awesome God. He is beyond any other false God for sure. He is the one and only true God. A mighty fortress is our God. We cling to him. He is our rock-solid foundation. And uh, and just to think about, um, you know, how amazing uh, God is, God of wonders, who created all things and sustains them for us. I'm glad that I know him, aren't you? That uh, we are vitally connected to the God of the universe and have a personal relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Well, thanks for joining us for our online uh, worship service uh, today. And uh, I want to share just a few announcements as we get going and then uh, get into the Word. Um, if you're viewing this online, you probably won't be able to um, attend this, but there is a special business meeting after the morning service today that is be hel being held in the auditorium at 1045, same time that you're watching the online service. 
It's a brief special business meeting basically to discuss and vote on a proposal to purchase equipment that will enable us to continue to live stream our Sunday morning services. During this time, we've been videotaping the messages, uh, sometimes on Wednesday or Thursday evenings, and then releasing them for public view through our Facebook page and our NBC website um, page um, on Sunday mornings. But um, this equipment will actually allow us to, on a Sunday morning, live stream. The signal will go directly to those pages, and you'll be able to watch them as it's happening in the morning service. Um, it's a cost of about $2,500 for the equipment, but I think it will be well spent. It will be a great thing to help um, shut-ins, others that can't get out, even uh, missionaries or those that have moved away that will be able to join us live uh, with our services each Sunday morning. So if you are able to come to the business meeting, it should be brief, and we'll give you all the details then. Then some other things coming up. Don't forget this uh, weekend is uh, Independence Day. Happy 4th of July. And actually, the 4th of July is on Saturday, and uh, the Mahoopany Parade is a go. So if you would like to help with um, decorating our church float, contact Pastor Colin this week uh, at the church office. Um, I think things get started at 10 a.m. on Saturday here in the church parking lot, but uh, you'll obviously need to be here early or find out the time that they're going to decorate the float. And then if you want to walk along, we'll be handing out flyers for VBS, can to the kids, and a great way to reconnect with our community. Very important that we do that. You know, there's been so many things that haven't happened and have been closed down over the last three months. It's time to reinitiate our um, relationship with our community, and uh, this is a good way to do that. Speaking of VBS, the Big Fish Bay, hooked on God's mercy. August 3rd through 7th, uh, we switched it to August. The Sunday after that, we'll have the annual chicken barbecue, and we'll use that as an outreach event to in invite friends and neighbors from the community, parents of kids that have come to VBS. There was a meeting this morning at 10 o'clock to just kind of get organized and uh, get the staff um, together. If you're still interested in helping out and serving in VBS, it's a great ministry. Again, see Pastor Colin. Very excited about that coming up. Um, just a reminder that during this time in June, uh, we're doing the soft reopening of our facilities. We are doing the morning service. Uh, last week, continues this week, we are doing um, nursery and junior church. Uh, remember, um, <clears throat> parents, please um, follow the guidelines. Um, any children with uh, sickness or symptoms, either with the kids or in the family, please keep them at home. Uh, that would be true of any of us, uh, that uh, part of our guidelines is any um, sickness or um, signs of sickness, uh, please stay home. Other things are posted in the bulletin as you come in the building. You've been great working with this. Um, it really hasn't been too difficult. Um, our church council is meeting right after our morning service today, and um, we're going to be discussing further reopening plans possibly to open Sunday school classes again as early as next Sunday, the first Sunday in July. We'll talk about some special Sunday evening events and um, uh, also planning on opening the Koinonia Cafe again next Sunday. So we'll keep you posted on all of those things this coming week. And then don't forget, if you're not able to attend Sunday morning services and you want to continue to give to NBC, you can continue to do that by mailing in your um, offering or tithe to the church office, or drop it off in the blue box. Um, we encourage you to do that. Again, you've been wonderful in supporting the ministry here at NBC with your faithful giving. Thank you so much um, for doing that and for honoring the Lord in that way. All right, well, we want to get to this morning's Bible study. And um, we're in the last two weeks of this series entitled, Hear Him, Life Lessons from the Master Teacher. And today and next week, it's going to be a two-part ending talking about how will it all end. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. But again, remember uh, the basis for this whole study. Um, the many great teachers throughout history in the scriptures, but God the Father, uh, above all of the others, says we need to listen to his Son. He gives honor, glory, precedence and priority to the message of his son. 
There is no one that could speak the truth of the word better than the living word, Jesus. And we need to listen to him. Remember that passage in Matthew 17 where Peter and other disciples saw the Lord transfigured. They saw Moses and Elijah with Jesus. But the voice from heaven, God the Father said, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. That kind of formed a bridge from the way God spoke and revealed his program to people in past generations. In the Old Testament, he spoke to the prophets. Remember in Hebrews 11, or excuse me, Hebrews 1, long ago, many times and in many different ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. The living word came to fulfill and to teach and epitomize the written word. And his words are life. Jesus himself said it. When I speak to you, I speak to you words that are motivated and moved by the Spirit of God and give you life, eternal life, um, as well as abundant life. And so the words of Jesus in teaching us are very, very important. So, for today's example... We want to talk about the end. Um, today's example in Jesus' teaching time is one of the subjects that intrigue many people. Prophecy, the end times, sometimes called the apocalypse. How will it all end? Yeah, you might have heard, uh, and I might have referred this to this before, one of the old gospel quartets that used to sing, Troublesome times may come, um, filling our hearts with fear. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. And the chorus of that song, gospel song, says, Jesus is coming soon. Well, in one of Jesus' most famous lessons, he takes the time to teach his disciples about all of this. Prophecy, end times, apocalypse. In what has come to be known as the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. The reason it's called the Olivet Discourse is because Jesus taught his disciples while they were on the Mount of Olives, a favorite place where they would go apart from the city to pray, to relax, to fellowship. And it was during this time, just before his betrayal and going to the cross for us, that Jesus set in motion what would happen in the end times. So, look at it with me today. Ask the question, how will it all end? Is this relevant? Is this contemporary to our age? You know, as we've been going through the difficulties of the last three months, and they seem to have compounded, some people have asked me, Pastor, do you think that these are signs that the end is coming soon? Could Jesus be coming soon? We see the, the plague of the virus. We see all of the unrest and the racial divide, nations rising up against nations. Well, all of these things certainly are troublesome indicators. However, I do want to put it in perspective. Every generation has had its difficult times. It's important that when we talk about this passage, that we do not let it fall into sensationalism as some have. Here's a very basic principle about the coming of the Lord. Jesus himself said, No man knows the hour in which I will return. But even in saying that, he began to prepare his disciples. So here's putting the perspective together. We don't need to worry. We don't need to certainly guess as some prophets have done, trying to set the exact date for the coming of the Lord. In fact, we don't really need signs of the times to want to be ready for the Lord. Hey, just because difficult times are here, that should not be what causes us to think about the return of Jesus. We ought to live every day in the light of his return. Jesus could come morning, noon, or night. It's called the, the, um, uh, the coming of Jesus is, uh, could happen at any moment, and we ought to live in the light of that. Now, putting that together, <clears throat> let's see how Jesus began to teach his disciples about how the end will come. 
And I want to take you to Matthew chapter 24. If you have a copy of the scriptures, uh, refer to it. As I read these first three verses, which are an introduction to this passage. In uh, Matthew 24, verse 1, it says that Jesus left the temple and was going away when his disciples came to point out to him all of the buildings of the temple complex. But Jesus answered them, Do you see all these things, all these buildings? Truly I say to you, there will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. He actually was predicting the destruction of the temple. Now probably what he was doing at this point is they were walking maybe down the southern steps of the temple complex. And over the, um, uh, the valley, the uh, Kidron Valley, over to cross over to the uh, Garden of Gethsemane and the Mount of Olives. Because the very next verse says in verse 3, As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, Lord, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the close of the age? Now look at how the Lord opens up this teaching time. Verses 1 through 3, Jesus leaves the temple, and his disciples decide to give him a tour. Hey, Lord, have you seen the great temple complex here? Jesus, based on their um, showing him the, the great uh, monumental structures of the temple, takes the opportunity to say, in the future, every stone of this temple complex will come down. And then, when they moved to the Mount of Olives, he must have intrigued the disciples and piqued their interest because they asked these questions when they sat down with him, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming? And when will it all end? So there's the context for why Jesus began to teach. Now, I'm interested especially in that um, verse 2 statement, every stone will come down, utter destruction. Did you know, um, and of course Washington, D.C. has been in the center of the news lately with some of the riots and insurrection, all of the difficulties that are happening. Did you know that there's an inscription in the dome of the U.S. Capitol that very few people know about? The inscription says this, and I, and I quote, One far-off divine event toward which the whole creation moves. Now, since it's way up in the dome of the Capitol, I think it's safe from those that are trying to destroy all the monuments of history, I sure hope they don't try to remove that one. Um, one visitor saw that inscription and asked the capital guide what it meant. The guide replied, I think it refers to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Indeed, it does. When the dome of our capital was erected, some God-fearing official ordered this inscription to be etched in the dome of our seat of government believing that its truth was vital to the concern of the nation. Oh, how our nation needs to know that, that the God of the universe is coming back one day, and no matter all of the arguments of man that take place, that is the day that creation is yearning for, and we as Christ followers yearn for that day even more. So look with me at how Jesus breaks down what he's about to tell the disciples about the end of the age, answering these three questions. When will it happen? What will be the sign of your coming? When will it all end? He gives a twofold focus in this discourse. He's going to teach his disciples, first of all, about events and attitudes that will lead up to his coming. And then secondly, he will rehearse some of the events of his actual coming. Now, we won't finish this all today. Part two is coming next week. But at least let's get started with it. So let's unpack this. Um, In verses four through six, he begins to talk about events and attitudes that will be prevalent leading up to the coming, uh, to the return of Jesus. Here's what he says. He answered them, his disciples, and he says, See that no one leads you astray, For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, 
and they will lead many astray, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, because all of this must take place. But look at the last phrase. The end is not yet. So Jesus says that there will be certain events and attitudes that are leading up to his coming, but will not necessarily signify his actual coming. What are they? First of all, this concept of deceived disciples, verse 4, deceived disciples. He says, um, see that no one lead you astray. Even disciples can be led astray. Judas Iscariot was led astray. Peter was led astray. Thomas was led astray. They weren't focusing on Jesus. And as the times get closer to the coming of the Lord, there will be many false Christs or false teachers that will deceive even followers of Jesus if they're not careful. Secondly, he says, there will be these multiple messiahs, many that will say, I'm the answer. I have come to rescue you, to deliver you. This is what Jesus says. Many will come in my name saying, I'm the Christ, and they will lead many astray. Then Jesus says this, children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. Now, very descriptive teaching there. Jesus says there will be many Antichrists. There will be a spirit of anti-Christian philosophy and teaching at the end of the age. Many Antichrists, plural, but he says also... Um, that there will be one Antichrist that will eventually come. All right. Now, let's cross-reference that with uh, what's said in 1 John 2, 18. John says this, Children, it is the last hour. By the way, John was one of them that heard Jesus teaching this. And he says, As you have heard that Antichrist is coming, many Antichrists have also have already come, Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. So we combine the teaching of Jesus' words on the subject along with what John says, and we have to be aware that there will be multiple false teachers who will claim to come in the power of the Lord. Thirdly, there will be war warblings. War warblings. What do we mean by that? He says, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. Now again, put that into perspective and timing. Wars and rumors of wars. Well, there's been a lot of that throughout history. And wars will increase. Uh, global destabilization is on the rise. There are multiple superpowers, even today, along with the United States, like a China, like a Russia, like a Korea, like an Iran, that they're, they're um, moving more and more um, against each other. But he says, even though those wars and rumors of wars that you will hear about, Jesus says, hey, don't be alarmed. Don't be afraid. That's part of what's going to happen, but the end is not yet. Okay? Um, he goes on to describe it this way. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are but the beginning of the birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death and will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Um, he goes on to say, Many false prophets will arise, lead many astray, and because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Now, I, I jumped ahead here a little bit, because what I want to do is I want to go back here for a second and connect these two, okay? Okay. When we finish these three things, notice these are events and attitudes leading up to his coming. 
But what I just read from Matthew 24 are the events of his actual coming. Do you see how this passage really forms a bridge between events and attitudes leading up to his coming and then what will become more intense when we know his coming is near? When we see these things taking place, he says all of these things are but the beginning of the birth pains. But notice this phrase, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. Let me stop here for a moment and describe what we know will happen. We know that we are in the church age, and the next event of the church age is what's called the rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4. The dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up to the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll hear that trumpet sound, and we will be called up together with the Lord. Once that happens, and the Lord doesn't come down to planet Earth at that point, he, we meet him in the air, all Christians will be removed from the earth, which will then utter in this period that Jesus is referring here to as the tribulation period, where people will be put to death and much, much harm will come to the inhabitants of the earth. Let's break it down real quick as we bring this to a conclusion Here's what will happen during the tribulation period. International ills in verses 7 and 8. The beginning of sorrows or the tribulation. He talks about the persecution of people. That's a direct reference to the Jews. Um, when Jesus says here in verse 9... Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and put you to death. He's specifically referring to what will happen to the Jewish people in that tribulation period. Then, in verses 10 and 11, it talks about that betrayal and more deception as uh, those antichrists become more and more apparent. Many will fall away, betray one another, hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And then notice verse 12, infinite iniquity and less love. Lawlessness will increase. The love of many will grow cold. Wow. Now, remember, all of those things that we've just covered are actual events in the tribulation, which will lead to, at the end of that seven-year period, the second coming of Christ. He will touch down right on the Mount of Olives, and all of these things will take place during that period of time. All right, so let's wrap this up for today, and we'll continue it next week. Here's today's takeaway. How do we know that this is the tribulation. Well, look at these key uh, words in Matthew 24, verses 13 and 14. The one who endures to the end will be saved. Now, is that talking about you and I? No, it's not. Um, we'll be out of the picture by then. If you know Jesus is your Savior, you will be with the Lord in heaven as a result of the rapture. But during the tribulation period, all of these antichrists will be deceiving many. Will some be able to be saved with the gospel in the tribulation period? Yes, I believe some unbelieving Jews will actually come to know Jesus, their Messiah. And he says, the one in the tribulation period who endures to the end will be saved. This gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. So during that seven-year tribulation period, it will be time, a time of preparation for those who have to endure great hardship uh, in order for them to be saved and go out of the tribulation. He says the gospel of the kingdom, what kingdom? The millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign that he will set up on the earth. And that this will be a testimony to all of the nations before the end will come when Jesus comes riding on that white horse for the final battle called Armageddon. So, I want to ask you a question. How will it all end? Have you heard him today? Are you prepared that there are troublesome times that we need to deal with? 
what is our attitude towards this? It ought to be Maranatha, even so come Lord Jesus. When we read about these troublesome times, and put this into perspective with the troublesome times we're in right now, even in our country and in our culture, that does not affect God's plan. Jesus will return. He's coming back. And for those of us that know him, he has a plan to take us out of this world before great tribulation. And then we will actually return with him to rule and reign on the earth during his kingdom. Do not fear, friends. This world is on a downward spiral. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3 says one day it will burn with a fervent heat. But God has a plan for us. Hold on to his word. Be faithful in every day saying, even so come, Lord Jesus. I am ready for your return. Uh, no ill can harm me because I am secure in salvation that you have provided for me. Now, our attitude ought to be, even so come, Lord Jesus. And in that vein, I would like for you to sing with me a great song. Um, I forgot to put the words up here, but um, let me um, read it for you, and then we can sing it. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. I'll sing it. Um, those of you that are watching at home, if you know this old gospel hymn, sing it with me. If not, you can just listen to the words. It reminds us that that day is coming. The end will be glorious because Jesus will be here to welcome us home to heaven. Here's how it goes. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. That great day, the culmination of the Lord Jesus Christ coming again. Will you pray with me? Father God, thank you for the promise that you are coming again. Thank you that in the midst of the turmoil of this world, the wars, the rumors of wars, uh, the treachery, the lies, the deceit, all the antichrist that will come, that you have a secure plan. Those of us that know you and have been saved are secure in that plan, knowing that you will come for us, take us to heaven, either by death or rapture, and that we will rule and reign with you forever because of our faith in Christ. Lord, help us not to faint or to shirk our responsibility to live for Christ and the gospel, even if these are the last days. And Lord, help us to believe and practice the imminent return of Christ, that you could come back any day, rapture us, take us home to heaven. May we live holy lives, looking forward to and anticipating your return. Help us to be faithful to the very end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us in our online service. Um, we'll keep you posted um, as to whether we're going to continue to do the videotaping of the services or when we'll get the equipment, if it's approved, to go with our live stream services. Um, not sure exactly what will happen next week, but we'll try to keep you posted on that. Hey, have a great week serving the Lord. Have a great uh, Fourth of July celebration. Stay safe. Uh, live holy lives that are pleasing to the Lord Jesus. Love you. Have a great week.